let's call him Ralph, with a weighty problem, namely his gut. He's appalled at how he's let himself go and desperately wants to have back the trim waistline of his younger days. But no matter how much he exercises, he just can't seem to drop the extra pounds. And it drives him into a depression. Then one day, while looking through one of his diet magazines, he sees an ad for liposuction surgery. And he decides to send away for a video that describes how it works. When it arrives in the mail one Saturday afternoon, he drops by his neighbor's house to get a second opinion. Hey, Larry. Hey, Ralph, give me a second, will you? And as usual, his friend, let's call him Larry, is busy working on a project in the garage. Yeah, yeah, that liposuction tape, it came in the mail today. They sent it. You want to watch it? Yeah, let's All watch right, it. Watch it. Right. Ralph tells him about the liposuction idea, and they pop in the video to take a look. And this is liposuction procedure, a very simple process. Watching the procedure, it looks pretty gruesome. And Ralph starts to have serious second thoughts. It kind of sits into a little bag here. It's kind of gross, but hey, what the hell, you know? It's going to make you thin. Then comes the clincher. The procedure costs $4,000. Well, there's no way that poor Ralph can afford it. Heartbroken, he feels like he's stuck forever with his spare tire. But his resourceful buddy gets an idea. Look around, man. I have everything you need here to make the liposuction machine. When you come down to it, liposuction isn't really all that complicated. All you really need is some lidocaine for an anesthetic and a pump to draw out the fat. Larry's wife is a pharmacist and could probably get a hold of some lidocaine. And the rest, he could rig up in his garage. Now, Ralph isn't too sure about this idea, but everything Larry lays his hands on seems to work. And Ralph is desperate to lose his extra baggage. So he decides to go for it. All right, all right, all right let's do it. Great. Let's do it. Great. OK. While Larry's wife secures the drug, Ralph collects all the bits and pieces they'll need to build their own liposucker. Larry tinkers together the machine and then sets up his operating theater. And when Ralph arrives, Larry is ready to proceed. You ready, Ralph? I'm ready. Ralph is jazzed about this and happily takes his place on the operating chair. Larry injects the lidocaine. It smarts, but only a little. Then he fires up his homemade liposuction machine. The procedure is anything but comfortable. Ralph doesn't care. He's determined to get rid of his flap. And he trusts Larry implicitly. All seems to go well for a while. But then Ralph starts to feel strange. He grows pale. And eventually, he passes out. Larry stops the procedure and tries to wake his friend. Ralph! Ralph! But on closer examination, he discovers that his buddy is dead. An autopsy would later reveal that Larry's machine did in fact work fine. What killed Ralph was an overdose of lidocaine. It's a way to die that, frankly, sucks through a tube. But did it ever really happen? women have been able to have legal abortions that I had heard of anybody going into a garage and having a home surgery. But the story's been in the press since 1999, and its credibility rests on just how driven a man could really be to shed some extra pounds. Men are thinking about their appearance like crazy. Pick up any men's magazine and we read about hairless chests and looking wonderful and, you know, that's a lot of pressure. There's an escalation to have men more beautified. And there was a time when men wouldn't be caught dead doing stuff like that. Of course, being caught dead is exactly what happened, according to the legend. Question is, what could motivate a man to take such a foolish risk? Well, they're afraid if they get too big. They're afraid of dying. So if he is afraid of dying, if he can't have sex, if he can't work, this is enough to get anyone's attention and then they're motivated to do something about this, to take dramatic steps. And dramatic steps can work wonders, as they did with this patient, who lost over 200 pounds. 
But dramatic steps can be risky and very expensive. $4,000? We're used to thinking of women as the ones most concerned with their looks, their weight, and their bodies overall. But increasingly, the pressure for men to look slim and trim has led to a psychological disorder that drives even the physically fit to obsessive extremes. Muscle dysmorphia is a condition in which the individual becomes preoccupied that he or she is not lean and muscular enough. Uh, typically in men who have this problem, they will look in the mirror and see themselves as small and wimpy, even though they are actually large and muscular. In order to spend more time working out, they'll lose girlfriends, sometimes lose jobs, sometimes even abandon careers. Muscle dysmorphia is definitely not just a matter of vanity or what we call narcissism in psychiatry. That there may literally be some kind of a chemical imbalance in the brain that predisposes certain people to become obsessively preoccupied with their muscularity. Still, obsessing about your muscles is one thing, but do-it-yourself home surgery? Does anybody really do that? In fact, they do. And not just to trim away fat, but to trim away fingers, toes, and other optional parts. It's called body modification, a macabre underworld where body parts are removed by their owners at home and traded by collectors over the internet. Some of these homespun surgical techniques involve only ice, string, and a razor. So they resort to home amputation and even self-castration to attain what they regard as beauty. You ready, Ralph? I'm ready. Clearly there are people out there willing to try anything even home surgery to give themselves a better self-image. But did the legend of the home liposuction ever really happen? It did. In September of 1999, David Solarte, a landlord from Belrose, New York, had his friend perform liposuction surgery in a makeshift clinic in his home. But his friend administered an overdose of saline and lidocaine used to soften the fat tissues. David went into convulsions and died. His friend was arrested on felony charges of practicing medicine without a license. A tragedy. But perhaps there is a moral. The urban legend refers to the fact that we've got to be very, very careful when we make decisions about how far we're willing to go to look good. We are a sorry lot if we would harm ourselves just to look good for vanity's sake. In this legend, Death comes in the form of a favor, but in another legend, it comes in a clever disguise. True or false, Humphrey Bogart was the model for the Gerber baby food label. The answer, when we return. <laughs>